All right, you guys. Uh, we are working on dealing with this flatbed. We're going on a vacation, not this week, next week, to a place called Silverwood in Idaho. It's like an amusement park, water park. Well, water park's not going to be open when, there, but when we're there, but it, it'll be an amusement park. And we're going to another place. Uh, I forgot what it's called. It's like 30 miles from there. 30 minutes from there. Uh, but I am trying to get this my tundra over there <whistles> unhooked from my trailer with this flatbed on it uh because i need to deal with my camper on the other side of this wall i got some stuff i gotta deal with it before we go on this trip so i gotta unhook this can you guys see where all the weight on this trailer is i'm gonna show you guys something pretty neat so when i built this trailer i was planning on uh, i loaded that big black jeep on this trailer multiple times uh, I knew that big black Jeep was pretty heavy when I built this trailer. Um, so I did something kind of cool. We're going to see if I can get to them. Oh boy. Yeah, we might be able to. So hopefully you guys can see these. These are camper stabilizer jacks. I put these on the back of this trailer thinking that thing was gonna really lift this trailer up pretty high. I'm so glad they're on there right now because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run those down to the ground so they're touching to support the weight of this so I can unhook it from my truck. I'm not 100% sure what this flatbed weighs. I'm guessing it's on the lighter side because this is all fairly light. See channel, it's inch and a half by I think three. Nope, four. <laughs> Calibrated hand, four. Uh -huh. Yeah, laugh at me. Anyways, um, everything else is pretty much angle iron under this. There's one four inch piece of channel here, the same stuff, inch and a half. Then there's angle iron right here to hold the wood. Angle iron here, angle iron here. This is pretty light duty flatbed from what I can tell. This is all quarter, sorry, quarter. Um, same with all the stake pockets and stuff, it's all quarter. Three sixteenths, eighth. I can see the hole, it's eighth. Um, yeah, all this is quarter. I'm not, that could have been eighth probably. I, I doubt I'm gonna, I don't know if I'm gonna keep this. Hopefully you guys can really see the twang in this thing. It is really lean back. Keep in mind this flatbed sitting on some, uh, some rounds, some firewood rounds. So it is leaning that way, but even still, it's bent back a little. Just on this one corner, uh, it's mainly about right there. It's bent. So this whole piece of angle iron right here is bent. All this wood's coming out. These are coming out. I don't even know if I'm going to keep this. I'm not sure I 100% like it. But it's cheap-ish. It's cheap. Considering the price of metal. Uh, I can't thank Sean enough for selling this to me for this price. Uh, I couldn't have bought the metal for what he sold this to me for. So even though I got to do some patching, you guys can see somebody knocks this out, I'm guessing, for some kind of gooseneck farmy thing. Uh, yeah, we're going to fix that. I don't know if I'm going to cut this out. I do have a piece I can patch that with. I may cut this out. I may cut out all the stringers in the middle of this thing, and we're going to go to inch and a half tube. because so I'm going to probably deck this with steel if I can swing it. I'm afraid it's going to be a little pricey, but what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to try to get those down. <laughs> That's the other thing you guys, I'm going to do some sketchy stuff here on the next video. I am going to run my winch from there to there to change to this, to lift this thing. I'm going to start on just ass end and see if it'll pick it on the ass end of this uh, flatbed. See if I can lift it up. I don't know how much this thing weighs. I looked it up online. They can weigh anywhere from 300 to about 800 pounds, roughly. I'm contemplating figuring out what a uh, four inch C channel weighs, measuring this up and kind of getting a rough estimate. This is like, I think this is 3 16 back here. Yeah, this is 3 16 this solid plate of 3 16 that's definitely the heaviest part of this whole thing, I bet. Everything else is pretty light duty uh, to me. It's 
really light. I think this was, I think Sean said it was on a half ton Ford. I may be wrong on that. I, I know it was on a Ford. I don't know if it was a half ton. I think it was a half ton though. Uh, so it's pretty light duty. Even the angle iron, you guys can see it right there that holds this wood. It's only eight. So I know that's, the, the angle iron's like, angle iron's like probably the lightest metal you can probably buy anyways. Um, but it's structurally st strong because it's an L. Uh, it's more structurally strong than most metal, I guess. Flat metal, blah, blah, blah. You guys get what I'm getting at. Um, so this, I'm pretty sure this is pretty light. There's literally one there, one here, on either side of that C channel, one there and one at the end. So I think it's a pretty light duty flatbed. Uh, which is good because that's what I need. My truck is just a half ton Chevy. But that doesn't mean this thing is light. <laughs> like, I can't budge this thing. I tried to lift up just one corner. I couldn't move it. Neither could my son. So there's some weight here. I just don't know how much weight is actually here. Uh, I could sit here and calculate all this metal out, weights and blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to wing it. We're going to, I'm going to build a beam across here. And I'm going to run my strap up and I'm going to pick up one, one side of it. See if the winch will do it. See if the rafters, I don't want to tear my shop down. So I'm going to see if the rafters will hold it. I know this is a little sketchy. I'm just kind of winging this. But looking at this, kind of figuring what it is. I know I can pick up one stick of this. It's pretty lightweight C-channel also. I know one 20-footer I can pick up by myself. And I'm thinking that's 816 doubled. I, I don't think there's a ton of weight here. And literally, I'm taking all the wood out of this before I do anything. The wood alone, I'm guessing, is rough guess at minimum 100 pounds. Guessing. Uh, that's a straight up guess, you guys. I honestly don't know what wood weighs, but even 100 pounds off this on those rafters will probably be pretty significant uh i think what i'm gonna try to do is lift this thing up and i got more of this pallet wood that i built my loft out of those are like seven and a half by eights i think i'm gonna try to build a little platform like four four posts and connect it with two by sixes so i can lift this thing up real quick pull the trailer out set it back down on those four by fours not four by fours eight by seven and a half there it's like kind of an off wood because it's for pallets of giant cnc machines that my work came on um see if i can set those this on those well we're just gonna call them eight by eights hyphens um and hold this because i gotta do a bunch of work to this thing before i can even try to stick it on that truck um i'm hoping like I said, I'm going to try to lift one in, see if the Jeep will do it, see if my rafters up there will hold the weight of this thing. And I'm going to put a beam across here. I have a... We'll see. I may build it out of 2x6s, but I do have an 8x8 eight eight that I can put across three of these to kind of disperse that load. I'm just not sure. That's 14 feet, you guys. That's a true 14 foot because it's a pole barn. It's true 14. All right, you guys. So I got to show you how <clears throat> these work. So... There's my camper jack that I welded on there years ago. Um, this is a tight fit. <laughs> you can see that bar. This is my crank. That's how I lower these right here. Um, uh oh, now I've probably got it stuck. So you can see it won't come out of there. You gotta slide it all the way over here just to get it out. Cause that's got a socket on it. You see it won't fit. Uh, I added these, these used to not be here, so it wasn't a big problem. I used to throw my, those are my ramps right there. I used to throw my ramps on the deck of this trailer. I added these, and like I said, it is tight, you guys. I mean, it goes in there, you gotta, you can only go one way to get it in there. You can't stick it in this way. Um, I just didn't want to move these. So, it is what it is. Uh, get it right, get it tight, I guess. Like, it works. You just got to make sure you know what you're doing. <laughs> Good thing I built it. I knew what I'm doing. Um, so now, you guys can see, now I can support the ass into this trailer with all this weight on it. Those are going to be perfect to hold this so I can unhook the truck and put it in the garage. 
all week long till next weekend because it's like Sunday night, you guys. Um, yeah, me and Drive went to Lincoln and had lunch and went to the high high country uh, beef jerky factory and got some beef jerky and they don't sell saltwater taffy there anymore. If anyone's watching that expect them to go to there and get saltwater taffy, they don't do it anymore. I think they stopped doing it when COVID hit. Damn COVID. Ah, pissed me off. Yeah, I went there just to get saltwater taffy. Nothing. But we did get some beef jerky. Went to the steak place and had some amazing cheat curds. They were awesome. Freaking breaded cheese curds, candied bacon with caramel sauce over them. Oh my gosh, dude. <laughs> they were good. So if you guys are in Lincoln, check out. It's the steakhouse in the middle of town, not the one uh, to the west. It's the one right in the middle of town. Uh, check them out, dude. I was, it was good. Even our hamburger was amazing. Uh, me and Drive just split everything, so it was good. And it was a decent price. It was like 36 bucks for me and Driver, uh, one meal, which nowadays is kind of expensive, but about the norm. So uh, go check those guys out, man. They're freaking good. I was surprised all the food we got was amazing. Their fries were good. Ranch was awesome. Yeah, so check them out, you guys. Uh, Lincoln's a cool place to go if you're in Montana. They got a lot of cool just small town stuff there. Yeah, um, so I'm going to work on unstrapping this trailer from the truck and probably, un yeah, I'll probably, I'm going to probably leave that strap on just because I don't know if this is going to roll on these logs. We'll see what happens here. Um, but I'm going to take this off. I'm going to start working on getting this wood out of here so I can see what I got to work with. Ah! Oh my gosh, you guys. Right here. I had all these like old tools that I got off my like, family farm. <laughs> there was that lug wrench. Like super old school lug wrench. I, man, I've had that like super old. I walked in here and I went to grab something. Black Widow like right there on my bench. I've been grabbing, sh I've been setting everything all day right there. Black Widow, man. Oh, God. Saw him, he crawled in here. I dug him out with this old school corkscrew that I have. And he's right there. Now, I think he's pretty much dead, but... Fucker. <laughs> he's dead now. All right, you guys. Uh, it's like Wednesday night after work. Uh, <laughs> I gotta show you this freaking thing, dude. It is creepy. Gotta set you down for a minute. I gotta show you this spider I just killed. Dude, the freaking thing looks like a darn tarantula, man. I don't know. We don't have tarantulas in Montana. But that thing is nasty looking. Oh, I really don't like spiders. Um, but I had to show you that because the other day, so my shop's not... It's sealed up, but it's got these industrial doors on it. So, like, each one of these where the lip is... Maybe it's easier to show you from here. So from here, stuff can get in that way. It's just a flap, just keep the weather out, but it still they still can get through there. Um, so I get a lot of spiders. Like, I killed a black widow there yesterday. Um, but I was actually walking through here the other day, and I felt something hit my leg about right here. And I looked down, and I saw this, like, really lacy spider web. And usually those are, like, black widow kind of webs. So I kind of was a little freaked out, I'm not going to lie. Because then right after that, I killed a black widow over there. And you guys know how I'm about these Black Widows. God, I hate them. But anyways, I was out here at night and I noticed this web got rebuilt. And it was literally from there all the way to here and across to my welder this today. So I took my broom and I knocked it down and I swept up underneath the trailer here and I knocked that big old spider down. It was yucky. It's got like hair on it and it's yuck. I don't like spiders. They creep me out. Um, anyways, now that you heard my story, we're on this. I'm doing some sketchy shit right now, you guys. Uh, all this wood is coming off of here. I'm going to have to add some braces. Probably should have showed you from the other side first what I, I'm going to end up having to do. Uh, hopefully you guys can see these lines. So this one right here is going to be the center of my tire. This brace can't be there. Um, there's just enough room for the tire to come up and clear if I have metal on here. If I leave this wood, the tire will get into it when the tire totally flexes. 
because I got about, there's about six inches between the axle and the bump right now. If I leave it like this, it's going to rub. <sighs> I want to deck this with metal. I'm going to have to price out the sheeting for this. We'll see where, we'll see what happens. But this has got to come out no matter what, because that's the center of the axle. Uh, I need about two foot roughly to clear the tire. I think I'm going to cut this off about right there. That's 90 inches. I'm going to have to cut like six inches off my frame of my truck because I want this thing as short as possible. So this will essentially be moved to here. Uh, first cross member will be there. So you have a cross, that rear cross member will be here. Cross member there, center axle, another cross member, another cross member. Then we have the one on the end that's the outside frame of this. Uh, but all this wood's got to come out. You guys can see how bad it is. I literally was hooking this winch up. I stepped right there and the boards broke. I tried to put a wrench on these ones out here and undo them. They're just spinning because they're all carriage bolts on this side. They're just spinning in there. So I'm kind of, I kind of took the winch off my big black Jeep. I'm going to, I don't know if I'm going to do this or not. I, I just wanted to see if I could pick this thing up mainly. I don't literally know how heavy this thing is. Uh, what me and Dylan looked up online was like three to about 800 pounds. Uh, I talked to a guy at work. He said his is a thousand pounds. He's got a one ton Ford. He just bought a brand new flatbed like a year or two ago. He said it's a thousand pounds. This one's nowhere near as heavy duty as that one. Uh, all the cross members are like eighth inch angle. Like it's super light, light duty. The outside's pretty good. This is four inch C channel. Uh, thicker wall stuff. Uh, that's four inch C channel, thick wall, but it's coming out. I got to move that. I am going to, all my reinforcements are going to go to four inch C channel probably. Uh, underneath it here, there's some doing I got to do. Uh, this was on a Ford pickup. This is going on a Chevy now. <laughs> uh, they have these brackets. I'm pretty sure they're in the wrong spot. They're like, Mm, half inch. Ah, oh, there's another spider web right there in my face. Uh, they're like half it, or three eighths angle, uh, four by four, I think, four by three, something like that. So those are probably gonna have to come off. This truck must have originally had two filler necks. They notched this main piece right here. I'm gonna have to fill that, and they chopped this right here for the other filler neck, which attached here. This I'm gonna have to reconnect or, sorry, my camera hooked on that log. I got a little strap on the end of my camera here, I hooked on that. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna have to fix that. Um, honestly, here's what I'm thinking, you guys, what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna order more of this. Uh, this is four inch and a half by four C channel. And I'm gonna pretty much cut these off, both sides gonna fix this hole fix this hole I'm gonna mount these to the frame of my truck then I'm gonna re put in my cross members this way out of C channel and I'll set it on here and I'll weld it to here so none of these it's got these the janky little block things this is a really crappy flatbed like you don't build stuff like this uh, okay I don't build stuff like this uh, this is all eighth angle that's like maybe I don't even think it's 316, some off size. Maybe it's metric angle, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think they make metric angle, maybe they do, but uh, yeah, it's really super lightweight. Like if you drop something on this, this would just collapse. So we're actually gonna run our C-channel across. It will tie in just like it is here, C-channel, right on top of this C-channel. We're gonna add three supports in here and I'm gonna try to deck this with 10 gauge. I know, 10 gauge seems a little light, you guys. This is just my plow truck. This It's a half ton plow truck. Uh, if this was a little bit heavier duty, one ton, I would start looking at something a little bit thicker, but literally eighth inch. These are only gonna be spaced about 20 inches apart where my cross members are going down the deck of this thing. It's not gonna be that bad. Um, we'll see though. Like I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put these cross members in I'll buy the decking, I'll set it on here, and I'll start stepping on this thing, see how bad it is. I don't ever plan on putting a ton of weight on this thing. I've put one, 
I think it was like yard and a half of sand in the back of this truck and it put it on its bump stops. It's only half ton, you guys. So keep that in mind. If you're building something, a flatbed or modifying a flatbed, make sure you're doing it for what you're gonna be using it for. This one's gonna be fairly lightweight. I'm gonna try to make it as lightweight as possible. Like I said, we're gonna lose maybe about that much. It's only gonna be, I'm gonna try to make it 90 inches because uh, that's right at the end of my leaf spring hangers essentially on the back of the truck. So I'm gonna try to shorten this thing up as much as possible. So yeah, that's kind of where we're at. Uh, I gotta get all these nuts off. I'm gonna restring what I got going on here with my winch cable. Um, this looks a little sketchy, you guys. I thought this flatbed was a lot heavier. I thought I was gonna have to build a beam up in my rafters to hold the weight of this thing. I'm pretty sure that one rafter will hold the whole weight of this thing. I can't, it's not that heavy. Um, literally, if you if you figure it out, like we got eight, 16, 16 doubled, maybe tripled on C channel. C channel's fairly light in weight, very structurally sound though. Um, so if this thing's over 400 pounds, I'd be surprised. All this tubing's super lightweight. This is all like eight. <laughs> So I was cutting all the nuts off and my son is being destructive. So, not only is it sketchy enough to work on a winch cable from a Jeep, he's standing under this thing kicking boards off of it. I'm holding. Yeah, make sure you get in between the, yeah, that ain't moving. <laughs> oh, I would stretch funny. That was a ninja kick. <laughs> Chop. <laughs> we might have to cut the rest of those. Oh, maybe not. Oh, you're bending my super chintzy angle iron. <laughs> I'm gonna have to cut that one. I tried and look what I did. I hurt myself. <laughs> I would help if you weren't wearing Crocs. Hey, these are working shoes. Are they? Yeah, they're off-road Crocs. I'm pretty sure Boeing would not, they're not say so. They're not regular Crocs, they're off-road Crocs. <laughs> That was my welder. My bad. <laughs> Good thing it's got a steel case on it. <laughs> I don't think that one's coming. Oh, out. you guys, look at this. This wood is rough. It's this is totally super crazy. lightweight metal. That's pretty heavy. Sides on it, really light, really light, really light back there. Yeah, I mean, literally, look at that. He's bending that angle iron. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I didn't get as good a deal as I thought, but I don't know. I bet this, we'll see. I'm going to buy more of this channel iron right here, this four inch channel. We'll see how much it costs. I, I'm guessing it's still going to be a couple hundred bucks. So literally I only paid a couple hundred bucks thing for this thing. So yeah, most of it's there. I got to fix this. So we'll see. Um, it's, like I said, the basis of it's there. So as long as this thing's square, that's the other thing. I'm going to pull tape and make sure this thing's square. It's not. <sighs> Dude. <laughs> I can see it in the... Good thing you're kicking wood right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be worthless otherwise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, you guys. We're going to get these last four boards off of here. Then I'm going to try to pick this thing straight up. I'm going to probably try to make some kind of stand to set it on. I got some more of this pallet wood that I made my loft out of underneath there, see if I can make a stand to set it on so I can hack out these centers and put some actual structure back into this thing. All right, everyone, uh, we're, it's Thursday night after work. Um, I just did some real sketchy shit. <clears throat> You guys knew what I was doing with this flatbed. Um, it's like I said, it's Thursday night after work. So you see what I got rigged up here. I got my, these are my chains that I use to put my racer on my trailer. I hooked this thing up. I actually originally tried to hook it to here. It wouldn't pick straight. It was trying to pick the, the ass end of this really bad. Uh, I did only hook it on the one rafter. This thing creaked and moaned a little bit picking it. It wasn't real bad, but it definitely, it put a little strain on it. It wasn't bad, I don't know. So I don't know if you guys can see this, but I have that, that tree saver strap kind of wrapped 
around it. I think it was pulling all those together. I didn't see anything move this way or this way. Um, this two by four is actually holding it all the way to my weight bearing wall over here. Uh, I'm not gonna say this is the best scenario, you guys. I wish I had my car lift in. That I have pads poured right here on each side of this for my car lift where my big Jeep's sitting. There will be a two post lift there someday. If I had that, I would totally be doing this with the two post lift. I just don't have it. I don't have the money for it. I don't have the money for the ceiling. I literally don't even have the money to do this correctly, you guys. You're gonna see me scab this thing together. I I wish I had the money. I just, I, I, I can't stomach putting the kind of money I need to into this to make this 100% right. And it's just for my plow truck, you guys. Like I, if it was my daily driver, I'd spend the money. So I got two sheets of 11 gauge and diamond plate steel decking quoted today. Dude, they're expensive, man. They are two, let's see, the eighth inch. So eighth inch is pretty close to 11 gauge, you guys. Um, four by eight is $264 a sheet. That's four by eight and I need two of them. The eighth inch diamond plate decking is 325. So we're talking over $600 to put decking on this, you guys. I, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. I, I'm struggling with the price of this. This is ridiculous and I really blame our government. I, oh my gosh. Anyways, uh, sorry. I am gonna continue to work on this. So you guys, I'm gonna try to get somewhere with it. Uh, I got it up. <laughs> you guys will love these. These are super ghetto jack stands or sawhorses. So these, were the original rock sliders on that Jeep when it was on 33s. I hack them apart. So this, this one here, it fits perfectly under the front bumper of this. That one back there, on this side, I've had these a long time, you guys. I built these when I was like 19. And I threw them together, tacked shit together so I get those axles under that Jeep. This one, fits the back of this Jeep. Um, so I can literally set it on the tow package back there and this front bumper here, and I can put the whole weight of that Jeep on these two jack stands, and it is sketchy. Um, this is actually pretty sketchy too. This is way lighter than that Jeep. Uh, but yeah, this literally holds my entire Jeep up. So that's kind of where we're at. I'm gonna start figuring out, hacking this apart. I'm thinking about going to angle iron, thicker angle iron for my cross members because I can't swing the price of this other metal. So yeah, that's kind of where we're at. Uh, I'll show you guys where I get when I get. I'm gonna cut a lot of this out. I'm re-fixing this, scabbing this together with a piece that I actually have laying around right here. Um, I, got, I got several little remnants. I'm gonna try to put this thing back together. It's just my plow truck, you guys. I, I'm just mainly piecing it together, so. Uh. I gotta take these off so I can hear myself. Uh, so we got all these bolts. They're still rusted in this angle iron. I'm gonna chop all these off. I'm gonna work on getting these angle iron pieces out because I'm not gonna use them. I'm gonna leave this one right now just temporarily. I priced out metal today. Again, you guys, these sheets were expensive to deck this thing. I'm gonna build this like I'm gonna deck it. I'm probably gonna put it on the truck. I'm gonna paint it. I. I don't know if I'm going to deck it this year. I That's 600 bucks I don't want to spend on this truck. I may put wood. With wood, I figured it out. It's like 120 bucks. But someday I want to do metal, and I need the space between the bottom of this where it's going to sit on the actual frame of the truck to here for the tires to clear. So if I do deck it, it's going to be wood. I'm going to put it on the top of this, and then someday... When I can afford it, I'll pull the wood back off and I will deck it with aluminum. The metal comes back down because it's ridiculously expensive. But I'm going to get all these bolts out of here. I think I'm going to cut this thing here eventually. I'm going to dovetail this back from 90 inches about right there. This way, I think. We'll see when I get it on the truck if I like it or not. So 
I'm gonna get all these bolts out of the way. pieces because I'm just gonna plaz them off because I don't want them anymore they're too weak literally you can see they're bending even just hitting it it's not strong enough for me so I'm gonna cut these out we're gonna go to a quarter inch of something the C channel the Ford C channel was like over $200 I ain't paying that I'll probably do angle iron more than likely uh, and then I'll put blocks coming up Similar to what they have, but heavy duty so that I can actually support this piece of quarter inch angle or versus the eight So we're going from eight one two five to quarter two fifty maybe three sixteenths uh, We'll see what the price difference is and Then my my square tube will come up and support that piece of angle iron off the main frame We are gonna fix this hole fix the gap there Let me get the rest of these cut out of here you guys Sorry guys. All right, so we got those bolts cut out. Um, this piece, this piece, I'm gonna plaz out. I want them gone. I'm gonna have to cut off of here. Uh, you guys seen the gap where somebody hacked a hole in this? I do have a uh, filler piece that I'm gonna put in there. I don't think that's it. That's too big. I do have a filler piece. All right there. So I had this left over from a trailer I did for a customer. Uh, so we're gonna scab that in there. I'm gonna cut this. We're gonna clamp some material in here to hold it straight. Just like you guys saw in the last trailer video where I widened that trailer for a uh, four-wheeler to go up on the front of the trailer. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna clamp some metal to here, clamp some metal to back there so I can get this piece in straight. We're gonna V-grind everything, weld it out so this piece is good and solid. I am going to get rid of this because I'm afraid you can see how tweaked and bent this piece is right here. Hopefully, I'm hoping you guys can see that it's tweaked all the poo. It's actually folded up right there. It's like a pretzel almost. So I want to get that off there to relieve the stress from here to here so I can clamp this straight to get this piece put in. I'm also going to get rid of this. 
we're gonna go to different metal. This has gotta come out because here's my center and my axle. My first beam's gotta be here and back here. So we got about a two foot span right here where my tire's gonna come up into here. So keep in mind, you guys, this is four inch and I think that's three, so four, five, six, seven. That gives me seven inches. It was like six and three quarter full bump from my axle to the frame on my truck. So my sheeting's gotta be up here or the tires are gonna touch. If you go through a ditch or something and the axle flexes this way, then it doesn't rub on the bottom essentially right here. Essentially it'd be the, the fender well, the inside fender well. We gotta make a fender well here. Um, and by doing that, we're using these two pieces of channel to get there, to get our difference in our thickness. This is in the way though. If that tire is right there, it's gonna rub on this. So this has gotta come out. That's gotta come out cause it's too weak. Too weak, need to fix that hole, need to fix this gap. At least there'll be some structure in it that way, or then I can start putting in new cross members. Uh, I'm still contemplating you guys. I keep saying it, dovetailing this thing that way. I don't know, we'll see when I get there. I am gonna cut this thing off right here. I may slide this whole piece up and just leave it squared off. I'm gonna leave it long for now. I'm gonna fix all this issues. I'm gonna set it on the truck and make a judgment call from there if I like it or if I hate it.